morning good morning good Global morning prayer harvest good morning warriors of the most high god good morning, good morning. welcome everyone good morning. allow me to greet you in the mighty name of our lord and savior jesus christ and on this glorious wonderful week it is not a mistake that we find ourselves here it is not a mistake that we find ourselves having to be chosen for the mandate and standing in the gap proclaiming the coming of our lord and savior jesus christ indeed he is the lord of revival he's the god of revival that we keep proclaiming even in these times i would like us to just um, close our eyes and allow him to move this morning as we'll be ministering and doing the work that he has called us to do father god we thank you once again we don't take it light my god we don't take it for granted that you give us an opportunity once again to come before your throne of grace. Lord, you said, come, let us reason together. And Father, we thank you that you have chosen men and women like ourselves in these times to stand, my God, and proclaim your name above all other names. We give praise, glory, and honor unto you for Global Harvest Prayer Ministries. We thank you, Lord, for each and every person that is in our midst this morning. And we pray, my God, that even those that are still going to watch and partake, Father, touch them, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Continue the work in which you have started in us and even in them. Globally so, let the fire continue to scatter. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you in our midst, and we ask you to take charge and total control. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hallelujah. I welcome amen. you once again in this glorious time. We are entering or we are gearing on this week with the revival for the youth. And when we speak of the youth, we speak of the future leaders. We speak of uh, the future fivefold. We are speaking of the men and the women of God that God has entrusted them with the mandate even in these times. Um, last night, we had another session. And in the session, we were speaking about the upbringing of a child, giving them uh, wings. One of the author, Pastor Babsi Shabalala, is one of our members here in the global prayer um, uh, 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 harvest move. And um, I think one of the testimonies that touched me was when um, a mother in, experienced a wickedness that has been instilled in the children at a very young stage. So the children are in primary, uh, uh, in, 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 in preschool, and this, the teacher of this preschool says to the children, uh, I, can, I can expose to you or I can teach you how to fly. You know how children just love this Batman, this, this Spider-Man. And um, the, it, it's, it's kids, they're in preschool. So the kids were excited. And the teacher says to them, I will teach you, I can teach you how to do it if you are interested to fly like your Spider-Man. They're children, they're inquisitive, who wouldn't want to fly because they see these things on TV, they wear these brands and, and all those things. And it happened that this particular teacher was uh, betting or she was a satanist. So her mandate was to train them as young as preschool and teach them or get them into this particular uh, function. And luckily, this the, the parents of these two kids were, were, were Christians, but they happened to realize that one particular day when they woke up, their children was not in the in the bed in, in their room. And they went, went to engage with the children. And one of the little ones who was uh, four-year-old, the four-year-old says, But mommy, our teacher comes to fetch us every night, and we go through the key home. She fetches us and she teaches us how to fly. And she brings us around four o'clock in the morning, every single day. So they were excited. They were giggling about that experience. Why am I sharing this with you? As we are about to embark in this journey, 
releasing or, or, or pleading with the Lord for he says, come, let us plead together. Let us reason together. I want us as parents. I want us as men and women of God, but I also want us somebody that will be listening even later on to understand that these things are real. Yet the Bible says we need to, to teach them as we, we need to bring them in the ways of the Lord so that when they grow up, they don't deviate. So what is it that we are teaching our children from young age? Are we covering them enough? What is it that God has instilled in them that the enemy wants to steal from them? So as we are about to enter into this prayer, I would like us to just read the promised book today from the book of, of, of Romans. Romans chapter 11, from verse one to six, as we are entering into this prayer in the promises of God, let us go into the book of Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11, I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbidden, for I also I am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. May we continue to verse two. God has not cast away his people, which he foreknew, who he not what the scripture said of Elias, how he maketh intercession for God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and digged down thy altar, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what said this answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself the 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so then at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. There is a remnant according to the election of grace. Highlight that. There is a remnant according to the election of grace. Let us continue to verse six. And if by grace then, it is no more of works, Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But it is be, if it is be of work, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more of grace. So what the scripture means is grace, it is not of work. It is not according to, to our works. It's not according to what you have done. There is no qualifications of grace. But grace is what God choose to give unto those it's not according to works. Father, bless the reading of your word this morning and continue to speak, O Holy Spirit, in the way and the manner that you see it fit. Let your word be a piercing factor. Let it separate the bones from the marrow. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. So as we are embarking in this journey, taking note of, of what I've just shared with you earlier on, um, yesterday the Holy Spirit was just reminding me of myself in my youth. When I got saved in, 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 at the age of 15 years, and I saw the grace of God then, but even in that grace of God, the enemy tried to trick, the, he tried to work against the call I found myself in that age of 15 years having to be um, an adult, having to lead a home at, at, at the age of 15. But by the grace of God, there were men and women of God, um, the pastors and the evangelists of times then that would just take me into their house over the weekend. They would just literally just adopt me. But let me just tell you something that when God has a purpose over, the, over your life, it starts at that very young age. And I remember, I, I keep saying even to those around me that most of the things that are manifesting right now or that I see around me, it is a prayer that I made as a 15 year old, as a teenage girl right back then. But the manifestations of those prayers I'm seeing, 
One thing that I would want to share with you is even at the time of 15, 16, the enemy wanted me to take my life. There was a point in my life that I committed or I wanted or I attempted to commit suicide out of depression, out of whatever that was happening, and out of, I think, the voices that the enemy would want to instill in you as a teenage girl, as a child. And by the grace of God, once again, he did not allow that to happen because there was a greater purpose that he has instilled in my life, which I did not know then. I did not understand then. But I've realized that whatever that I've experienced as a teenager then, the same enemy that I had to fight, visible or invisible, and the same protection and the grace that I saw over my life, that grace is still available. That fight is still as intense as it was then and even right now. But what is it that we need to instill in our, in our children? What is it that we need to instill in the, in the youth of today? What is it that we need to encourage them on? What is it that God wants to do in the youth of today? Again, I'm going to go back to my initial opening statement. When God starts to work in a man, he doesn't wait for you to, be, to become 60 or 50. This, you, you, you are born with this. The, 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 the seed is planted on the day that you are ushered into this world. And I'm going to give you scripture references before we get into this prayer, into the prayer today. And I want us to look at the life of, of, of David. I want us to look into the life of Samuel. I want us to look into the life of Joseph. And I want us to look into the life of Meshach, Shadrach, Abednego. Just to take a few, I want us to look into the life of Daniel, the life of, of Moses. All these people that I've just mentioned, God instilled or he started working with them at a very young age as teenagers. We look, at, we look at the life of, of, of Joseph, Joseph that God had to use at the later age so that he can become the deliverer of the, the Israelites. But we see God working with Joseph or giving Joseph his vision from a very young age at the age of 11 years of age. At the age of 11 years of age, we are told that Joseph was a dreamer. He began to see visions. God began to show him a picture of who he was. God began to speak to him through visions and dreams. And it was through visions and those dreams that, 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 that the oppressor came in and he also wanted to fight. I want you to understand what, that when there is a vision, when there is a purpose of God, over, the, over your life as, as, as a child or as a woman, as a man of God, as the youth of today, there will always be an oppressor. There will always be an oppressor. When God releases a purpose, oppression or your opposition also comes through. This is at the time when God releases a purpose to Joseph and gave him a vision, the oppressor also came in to steal or to oppose the purpose that was upon his life. And we see Joseph now being prosecuted by his very own brothers. We see Joseph now going into prison. But even at that moment, even in those times, God did not forget what he said to Joseph. I found myself at the age of 18 being pregnant, having to accept Jesus, having to evangelize from the age of 15. It was an embarrassment. It was, it was heartbreaking. It was a disappointment even to the church as a, as a church leader. And I remember I would just go to church and I would just find myself crying. And I will cry myself to, to sleep. And I will say, Lord, I've disappointed you. This should not have been me. I know the truth. I know who you are. I went out there and I confessed who you are. I spoke of your light. I spoke of your righteousness. 
But look at what the enemy did. He tricked me. And as a teenager, I find myself being pregnant. I found myself having to be a mother at the age of 18. And here is Joseph with a purpose and a vision. And there's an opposer that wants to destroy him. Joseph find himself in a prison, but even in that prison, he did not allow the situation to oppress him. He, uh, he stood to confess or he stood to believe and trust in the God that was introduced to him by his father, Jacob. So what, I, uh, what, what I'm saying to you is, even in these times, the principles of God remains the same. What, what the enemy would do, it is not of old. It is no surprise. It is nothing new. He still used the same tricks of then. You look at the life of David. You look at the life of Samuel. God begins to speak to Samuel at a very young age. And we are told that Samuel in his times, when he was sleeping, there God introduces himself. He wants to speak to Samuel in the temple. And Samuel wakes up and he goes to Eli, his mentor, and he says, Eli, uh, I hear you are calling me. And the man of God says, it is not me. On the third time, he realized this child should be called by God. It can't be me. When he calls, says, here I am, Lord, speak. He's answering his call, even still within his time, his, his youth period. We are told that Samuel was only 13 when he says, here I am, Lord. So I'm, I'm, I'm making reference to all of this just so that we, we cut the time. My time is very short. I'm making reference to all of this that there is Samuel who had Eli as a mentor. Eli who understood the ways of God and how God works in a person. But again, Samuel again as a child having to understand that there's a God that speaks. He's answering to that call at the age of 13. It doesn't mean that Samuel did not encounter or, 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 or have challenges. We are told even after he says, yeah, I am Lord speak, there were opposition. God began to speak to Samuel as a prophet, but even as Samuel was rising as a prophet, we are seeing that there were oppositions. Eli's children were not happy with Samuel. Even Eli himself, he goes and he says, whatever it is that God has told you, I'm not going to oppose it. I know he spoke, so just say whatever it is that God has said. And Eli knew that some, God was raising someone to come and replace him. But as a mentor, he continued to release a mantle that was upon his, his life unto Samuel. As we are entering into this prayer, I want us to pray also for the Elis of today. Do we have Elis of today that will raise up the Samuels? I want us to pray for the Josephs of today, that even in oppression, they will still remain, even in prison, they will remain or they will come out of that prison to become the prince. They will come out of that prison and still become the leader or the deliverer. We see Joseph engaging with his brothers in the book of Genesis 42. And he says, what, what God, what you have meant as evil, God has used that for, for, for the deliverance of his children. What the enemy means for evil, what the enemy has meant for evil, God uses that for the deliverance of his people. You look at the life of David, as young as David was, but God chose him. He consecrated him, being the smallest children. And we, we, we hear the men of God going to anoint David. And, and, and the Bible says that he says, are, are all your children uh, have I seen all of your children here? And we're told, no, there's the youngest one that is in the field. And this is the one that God has chosen. David was still young. He was still a teenager. Even though we are not given the age of David, but if, if, when you look at the Bible, when David got and go to, go to fight Goliath now, we are told that he could not fit into the gears. We are told that he was not of the age of, 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 of those that were trained or those that were already warriors. Because for you to be a warrior, you had to be 20 and above. So he was still a teenager. 
David was still young. If anything, we could also uh, 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 approximately say David was probably between the age of 14 to 16, to, to 16 or 17. He was still a teenager, but God used him. God still used David. God, we see the power of God working through David. We see the hand of God upon the life of, of, of Samuel. We saw the hand of God upon the life of, of Joseph. What about the three Hebrew boys? Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. They were between the age of 11 to 15. They were still teenagers. Daniel himself, he was still a youth. He had not reached the age of 30. And these are the powerful men that God used to release the revival. It was through the three Hebrew boys that God had to be known in the nation, that they opposed the kingship. And they said, even if you throw us in there, even if we don't come out of that fearing fire alive, we are not going to bow down. The book of Romans 11 that we just read, he says, I have chosen for myself seven men that have not bowed down to Eli or that have not even released, that have not kissed the, the, the ball. It is by grace. So I want us to enter into this prayer this, this morning and say, Lord, we understand that your grace is sufficient for us to enter the dungeons, to enter spaces, to enter the world and claim back the youth of today, claim back the, the, the David of today that are bold, claim back the Joes of, of today that will not lose the vision even when opposition is there, claim that the Samuel of today, the prophets of today that will arise in power, that will not even be, be discouraged, but they will stand without experience, I want us to enter into this prayer today and say, Lord, raise the early of today. The early of today that will see the grace of God upon the lives of the Samuels. Raise the mentors of today that will see grace. Remember I told you about the men and the women of God that will take me from at the age of 15 and they will take me to their house. Those were my mentors that God has raised. Those were my earliest that God will raise. I did not know them. Even today, I don't even know where they are. But I will move from one household of this evangelist, of this missionary, of this pastor to another household. The grace of God was upon my life. The grace of God is still the same even today. May God raise the mentors even in these times that will mentor the youth of today that they will not even despise the work that is upon their lives, but may God just raise the earliest of today. As we are entering into this prayer, I want us to enter in the prayer and say, Lord, raise our Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego in the schools, in the schools that will, 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 will counterfeit, that will come head on, with the systems of this world, the, the education that says there is no Christ. Raise the, the ch these children, these bold men and women and, and, and girls that will stand and proclaim Christ in the classroom, that will proclaim Christ in the playground. Raise them. Let this fire. We have gone through the interface. We have gone through a phase of revival, the mantles, the 30 days of mantles upon us. And each and every one of us, I believe we have received of this fire. Now I want you to release yourself. I want you to release this fire so that it may scatter to the end of this world. I want us to open ourselves up this morning and say, Lord, and face every direction. Release this fire to the north, the east, and the south, and the west of this world. And say, Father, let this fire begin to go and scatter. Let it begin, let the light of you begin to, to, to shine upon every girl child, upon every girl uh, boy, upon every man and woman, young or old that is rising up. As long as there is a seed of faith that is as little as a mustard seed, God, may you work in it and raise our David. May you work in it and raise our Joseph. May you work in it and raise our, 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 our 
our, our, our prophets, our, our, our summers, the fivefold is in those children, in those classrooms. As they are going to schools this morning, I want us to just release the power of God. I want us to just enter and speak and command the north, the east, and the south and say, Lord, let this fire that you have entrusted in us, that is in us, begin to scatter to the end of this world. Let it begin to enter our children. Let it enter them in the classrooms. Even the teachers, the principals, let this grace find them. Let them become the allies of today. Let they be the mentors of these hours of the end times. In Jesus' mighty name, let us begin to pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. We come before your throne of grace, my heavenly Lord, Father, having to understand you. your Thanks word, oh heavenly Father, God, we stand Lord, to say, Father, we give praise, glory, and honor unto you. Lord, we you the 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 Father, we are saying, presenting to you a remnant of the Lord, say, Lord, I'm going to take just one last prayer point before I hand over to Pastor Light. I see it's just a minute after six now. Um, I want us to just take last one prayer point that when all opposition of these times are released against these people, against the children of the Most High God, I want us to just pray and release a covering. I want us to release a herd of protection around the youth of these times. I want us to release the hedge of fire around each and every one of them as we are claiming them. I want us to release the wisdom of God upon them. I want us to release the, the, the grace of God upon them and say, Father, you said you are you will raise your own remnant in this time when your seven cry out and said i'm the only one left he said no i've raised seven thousand other men as my remnant that have not bowed down to baal or kissed baal therefore i want us to proclaim the seven thousands in our times and say lord even when we are thinking that it's over when we are thinking that the youth of today have lost it, but Father, we are believing you according to your word that you are able to raise your remnant in the youth of today. And as we are proclaiming this one, so shall it be. Let us begin to pray. Father, 
We are believing you, my God, for the remnant of this time that you are raising them to be bold. You are raising them to be wise. You are raising them to be wise. You are raising them, are raising them, are raising them for this time, Lord. Father, you are going to do it, my Father, in the Our <laughs> And the seven thousand and the seven thousand and the seven thousand are rising up, that are rising up as your reign, that are rising up as your when they oh, hear your God. voice, my like, father, the words are not hard in their hearts, but they will turn away from any wicked way and hear you speak and follow your voice and your direction. Lord, we prophesy unto the sinners of the youth today, and we say, Lord, the light of them shall shine upon each and every day. And we prophesy that the youth of this hour, the youth of the end times, to hear your we give you praise most high we honor you and we adore you hallelujah all right, thank you so much. Um...